Hello grade 12s. Today we'll be going through a few problems on Venn diagrams and contingency tables. Let's look at a Venn diagram first. We'll do this by examining the data collected from 62 students about the types of fruit they liked. 34 liked apricots, 30 liked bananas, and 33 liked oranges. 11 liked apricots and bananas, 15 liked bananas and oranges. 17 liked apricots and oranges, and 19 liked exactly two of the following fruits, apricots, bananas, and oranges. We have three different fruits, so that means we need to draw three circles in our Venn diagram. The first subset we'll call subset O for oranges, B for bananas, and A for apricots. Now we need to try and complete these subsets using the information given. The intersection in the middle of all three subsets is always the information that we need to put in first. In this case, how many students like oranges, bananas, and apricots? And this information is not given, so we need to make the intersection x. If 34 liked apricots, then the whole subset A must add up to 34. It's also given that the whole subset O and the whole subset B must add up to 30. We write these numbers outside the respective subsets first. It is also given that 11 liked apricots and bananas, which means that the intersection between A and B, which is this area, must add up to 11. Thus, we can fill in that this area will be 11 minus x. It is also given that 15 liked oranges and bananas, which means that the intersection between O and B, which is this area, must add up to 15. Thus, we can fill in that this area will be 15 minus x. 17 liked oranges and apricots, which means that the intersection between O and A is 17 minus x. We were also told that 19 liked exactly two of the fruits. This means that these areas must add up to 19. We can solve for x by setting up an equation. 15 minus x plus 17 minus x plus 11 minus x equals 19. We add the like terms and take the numbers to the right. Negative 3x equals negative 24. This means x equals 8. We can now use our answer to fill in the unknown areas with x's. Now we can complete the subsets by subtracting the areas that we have from the total for each subset. Remember how we wrote the total numbers on the outside of the subsets? We must now subtract the numbers in the intersections from the totals. Why don't you try this before looking at the answer? Did you get these answers? The subsets add up to 59, but there were 60 students that participated in the survey. So outside in the subset, we need to add a 1. Now we have a complete Venn diagram. Let's do an analysis of what we see. Now using the Venn diagram, we see that 14 students liked apricots, but not bananas or oranges. If we want to calculate how many students liked oranges or bananas but not apricots, we need to add all of the relevant sections together. 6 plus 7 plus 12 is 25. A two-way contingency table always shows the counts for the four possible combinations of events as well as the totals for each event and its complement. We can use a contingency table to compute the probabilities of various events by computing the ratios between counts and to determine whether the events are dependent or independent. The following example shows a two-way contingency table representing the outcome of a cell phone study. This two-way contingency table shows that 59 grade 11s have cell phones, 50 grade 12s have cell phones, 6 grade 11s and 3 grade 12s don't have cell phones. In total, 118 learners were surveyed. 109 of them had cell phones and 9 of them didn't. 65 of the 118 are grade 11 learners and 53 of them are grade 12 learners. 
Once the information is tabulated in the table, it's really easy to answer these questions. Like, what is the probability that a learner in grade 12 has a cell phone? The intersection between having a cell phone and being a grade 12 learner is 50. To get the probability, it will be 50 divided by the big total, which is 118. This gives us an answer of 0 0.42. If we want to calculate the probability that a grade 11 or 12 learner does not have a cell phone, we would use the total number of learners who do not have cell phones. The total of learners who do not have a cell phone is 9. And 9 divided by the total, this gives us an answer of 0 0.08. Now let's apply some of our previous knowledge to the information in this table. Is the grade of a learner and whether he has a cell phone or not independent events? According to the definition, two events are independent if the probability of A and B gives the same answer as the probability of A times the probability of B. Let's use the probability of a learner being in grade 12 and the probability of a learner having a cell phone to determine whether these events are independent. Or in other words, the probability of one event occurring does not affect the probability of the other event occurring. The probability of being in grade 12 and having a cell phone at the same time will be 50 over 118. The probability of being in grade 12 only is 53 over 118. And the probability of having a cell phone if you are in any grade is 109 divided by 118. Now we need to test whether these two events are independent or dependent. 109 over 118 multiplied by 53 over 118 gives an answer of 0 0.415. But this answer is not the same as the intersection between grade 12s having cell phones. Thus, we can come to a conclusion that these events are not independent. Thank you for joining us, grade 12s. Remember that if you need more revision on this section, you can watch the grade 10 and grade 11 mindset videos on probability. Also look at the tasks for this section in the counting and probability tasks video. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.